From everyone's favorite new girl feeling there were bigger things to pursue than life in an office, to one of the galaxy's greatest creators dodging an iconic sitcom part to pursue other roles and opportunities. These are those actors who went on to greatness after turning down certain TV jobs. Gareth here from WhatCulture.com and here are eight actors who saved their careers by turning down TV roles. Number eight, Johnny Galecki was tired of playing the best friend, so turned down Sheldon. Johnny Galecki found himself being offered the chance to step into the role of none other than Sheldon Cooper early into production on the then incoming Big Bang series many moons ago. But after spending an age being cast as the best friend or the gay assistant as he told Variety, the actor known for his work in the likes of Roseanne and many a small movie role up to that point, decided he wanted to play the guy who seems to have a future of romantic triumphs and difficulties. Sure enough, Galecki soon wound up making the part of Leonard Hofstadter his own. Own, with Jim Parsons brilliantly stepping into the instantly iconic Sheldon part instead. Had Galecki not opted to say no to the idea of going full Cooper though, would both stars have gone on to become household names? And would Johnny in particular still find himself being pigeonholed into romanceless roles for the foreseeable? Thankfully he did and the rest was Big Bang history. Number 7, Zoe Deschanel preferred the idea of long-term new girl over the office. Brilliant showings in the likes of Elf, Yes Man and 500 Days of Summer had helped establish Zoe Deschanel as one to potentially watch going forward in the mid-2000s. But it was a proposed role on the American version of The Office that proved to be the catalyst behind the star taking on her most notable and acclaimed role to date. As Deschanel herself would admit during the first episode of the Welcome to Our Show New Girl Rewatch podcast earlier this year, the actor was all set to pop up in the smash hit mockumentary show before said New Girl script suddenly dropped onto her desk. And if it wasn't for The Office arc she was set to execute opening her mind to the idea of a TV venture, she wouldn't have been open to reading a TV script in the first place. So after sensing there was more fun to be had in exploring a character for longer than a few guest appearances, or even a two-hour feature, the eventual Jessica Day actor decided to gamble on being one of the first stars to really cross over between TV and film at the time, with this new girl venture. And said risk paying off ultimately paved the way for the star once again becoming the name on everyone's lips after the big screen debacle that was Your Highness. Number 6, Hugh Grant wasn't comfortable signing on before seeing two and a half scripts. After the absolute shocker that was Did You Hear About The Morgans, yes I did, they weren't very good, Hugh Grant soon found himself on the outside looking in for a spell. Despite the movie business seemingly not being all that keen on the long-term leading man though, it wasn't as though the actor was short of opportunities on the small screen. In fact, Grant actually ended up being offered the chance to step into the leading role in Two and a Half Men back in 2011 in the wake of Charlie Sheen exiting the hit series. Yeah, the four weddings and a funeral star ultimately opted to pass up on that proposed part, stating that they did didn't have a script or a new character. They just said, trust us, we'll create one. Admitting to being too scared to sign up without a script, the role eventually went to Ashton Kutcher as the CBS show's ratings would steadily decline over the coming years. While Grant's reluctance to step into the Charlie Void actually set the stage for him to find new success as a character actor both on the big and small screen in the time that would follow. Number 5, Michael Keaton didn't feel like committing to a long-term lost project. He may be enjoying one of the strongest spells of his career so far in recent times, but Michael Keaton was in a very different place in his life back in the early 2000s. Largely disappearing from the mainstream and not exactly bringing in the sort of acclaim and box office numbers he once had earlier in his career, Keaton happily entertained the idea of joining forces with J.J. Abrams on the small screen, as the talented creator looked to unleash his new Lost series on the world. Only what at first seemed like a rather intriguing idea, that being showing up as a variation of the Jack Shepard leading role, only to be killed off late in episode 1, soon began to change as production on the show picked up steam. Instead of being a one and done appearance, it soon became apparent that Jack would have a much more significant role in the show. And that was something Keaton simply had no interest in pursuing. And judging from the directions Keaton and eventual Jack Matthew Fox's careers have gone down in the years since Lost became a monster TV hit, it seems the rejuvenated big screen acting titan was right to steer clear of this particular long-term commitment. Number 4, Jamie Campbell Bower went on to bigger things after dodging 
watching a brief Game of Thrones cameo. When discussing the sudden cancellation of Game of Thrones spin-off series Blood Moon, the star was once attached to earlier this year, Jamie Campbell Bower was quick to note how everything happens for a reason, and the same could be said of the actor's last dance with the world of dragons and white walkers. With the eventual Stranger Things Big Bad once being in line to rock up in the first ever scene of the original Game of Thrones pilot. Despite initially appearing in said prologue for Game of Thrones as Sir Waymer Royce, however, Campbell Bower would ultimately have to turn down the call to reshoot said sequence later down the road, due to his commitments to the incoming Camelot show, one where he'd be playing none other than King Arthur. And while said Camelot project wouldn't exactly immediately catapult him to superstar status, it did prove that the star was capable of holding his own in a meteor role. If he'd turned down that leading role in exchange for a quick White Walker death, maybe Campbell Bower's TV career wouldn't have paved the way for his game-changing recent work as the nightmarish Vecna too. It's worth noting that his Royce replacement, Rob Ostley, while effective in the fleeting part, didn't go on to shake up the upside down or make much of a splash anywhere else post chilly opening scene death. Number 3. Jon Favreau wanted to work on other projects instead of being Chandler had a young Jon Favreau opted to understandably accept the chance to line up alongside the likes of Jennifer Aniston and co in an upcoming sitcom that looked destined to take the planet by storm, perhaps the prolific star wouldn't have actually been given a shot at flexing his creative muscles elsewhere in the first place. As it goes, Favreau was actually initially offered the part of Chandler Bing in Friends, but the up-and-coming comedy star decided against signing on the dotted line in favour of pursuing other work. He would still stop by the show for a few appearances as Pete Becker in 1997, Mind, but it's hard to imagine a world where he would have found the time to create the likes of Elf and Swingers, setting the stage for Lion King and Mandalorian success down the line, while also trying to juggle cups of coffee in Central Perk too. Number 2. Rob Lowe wouldn't have been able to do Parks and Rec had he starred in Grey's Anatomy Rob Lowe was very much aware of how big an opportunity had been sent his way when he was suddenly offered the role of eventual mega dreamy Derek Shepard as Grey's Anatomy was set to begin production. The only problem was that the actor had already agreed to star in CBS's Dr. Vegas show, and with ABC not exactly smashing it out of the park at the time, Lowe sensed the odds were just too stacked to turn down the Vegas spot. Ah, oh, we all make mistakes. But far from regretting the Mr. Parent's $70 million payday, Lowe has gone on record to note how he doesn't feel he would have nailed the part in quite the same way Patrick Dempsey eventually did. And had he not turned down the role, he likely wouldn't have been able to commit himself to the much-loved part of upbeat city manager Chris Traeger in Parks and Recreation, or many of his other subsequent big and small screen roles for that matter. And as Lowe himself would put it, if it had been me, the fans wouldn't have called me McDreamy, they would have called me Rob Lowe. So maybe his passing up on the part was best for all involved, eh? Number 1. Whitney Houston turned down The Cosby Show to pursue her career in music Long before she became one of the most well-known music sensations ever to grace planet Earth, Whitney Houston was simply a fiercely confident youngster with designs on making it big, and said desire soon resulted in the star actually turning down a chance to be one of the main players in a little series by the name of The Cosby Show. As one of the famous sitcoms directors Jay Sandrick would eventually reveal, Houston came incredibly close to being cast in the role of Sandra Huxtable, but in response to being told to sign a contract to consistently show up on the series, a young Houston replied by explaining, I want to be a singer, I can't be in every show, I want to be in every tour. And despite replying with an honest no to Sandrick's questions over whether she had a record deal or had toured at any point recently, that still didn't stop Houston from believing she would make it big in the industry. Sure enough, upon passing up the role in favour of focusing on her music career, a legendary star was ultimately born. And that's our list know of any other actors who saved their careers by turning down TV roles? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below and do not forget to like, share and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if you like this kind of thing, then head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video you're watching right this second is based on. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you as always for clicking on this lovely video today. Hopefully I'll see your faces very, very soon, but in the meantime, just be good to yourself. Bye-bye.